it's very simple. You got to have the heart, right? You got to have that desire. And you could tell early on if someone has that or not. Welcome to Shooting Straight with Brad and David. I'm David Klaus, your Navajo County Sheriff, and my partner. I'm Brad Carline, your Navajo County Attorney. And today we're in Taylor, Arizona at the Northeastern Arizona Training Academy or facility, and we're joined with Chad Kruger, uh, the director here at the Academy. Thank you for joining us. You're welcome. So did I get that right? Northeastern Arizona Training Center, right? Northern Arizona Training Center. Northern Close. Arizona. Well, Chad, thanks for joining us. Um, you're the new director. You've uh, just started out here earlier this summer. Tell us a little bit about your background, your experience, and uh, what you got going on here in Taylor. Excellent. Well, first off, thank you for uh, coming out here. This is a great opportunity. I'd um, like to show the community a little bit about this place. Um, but a little bit about me is I started off in law enforcement in 1995. I went to a police academy in Prescott, Arizona. I uh, became employed by the Wickenburg Police Department. It was my first agency. Worked there for about three years and got some specialized training, uh, training in field training, general instructor, um, decided to move on to where I was from. I was from the Prescott area. Um, so I went back to Prescott, got hired by the town of Prescott Valley. Um, great opportunity in 1995. I knew I wanted to be a teacher. I was teaching and I got involved in the police academy there. And I started teaching in 1999 all the way up until I left in 2018. So, and had the opportunity to come to Navajo County. And Navajo County is a great is place my family and I wanted to move to. And I was hired on. I started off as a deputy and fortunate they, uh, that I, I like to train and I got to come to this very academy where we're standing at today for about a year. And that really kind of motivated me even more, right? Because I got to learn a lot more about the day-to-day -day ends of a police academy and got to do it for a year. Um, paid for by Navajo County, which was even better. And uh, after that, I left the academy, was promoted as a sergeant and assigned to Heber. And then I promoted as a lieutenant in South County, which is the Sholo area. And so, that's when the academy recruited you back. Yes, in <laughs> kind of a, ways. So right? how long has the academy been putting out law enforcement officers in Navajo County? So that is a very good question, a little trick question. So I, I am aware, I have friends that went to academy here in the 90s. So I'm not sure if it started before that. It was a different type. It wasn't a full-time academy. It was um, a reserve academy. But as far as full-time, 2012 was about the first time they... So when you talk about a reserve academy, that's one that takes about a year to get through yep. going on weekends? Yep. Yep, about 10, 10 months. It's a uh, evening courses and then some weekends scattered throughout there and it, it goes about a 10 month time period. And now how long does it take for somebody who wants to become a law enforcement officer to become certified through the academy here? So generally, be, depending on the academy and even this one has changed in times, anywhere from 18 to 21 weeks. Right now we're running about 20 weeks. So you hold how many, you hold two classes a year? Yes. And they follow the school calendar, or for, the, for the, the some, most part, the college calendar. For the most part, pretty yeah, close. And the reason you mentioned that, Sheriff, is because MPC is a partner in this. Yeah, tell us a little about you know really who the partner is and how this kind of works between uh, law enforcement and the college. Yeah, so so the way it works is I actually work for Northland Pioneer College, and uh, continuing with the NATC. Um, functions with the the different police chiefs so the way it works is northland pioneer college handles the curriculum based um, for getting the students that come here college credits right and so they come and they endure all this training and learning and the college is able through the curriculum to get them 30, I believe it's 36 college credits towards their associate's degree. That's more than half of what's required for an associate's degree. Um, so that is what is the great part about the, the college interaction with this uh, police academy. So are your instructors then 
through the college or are they through law enforcement or volunteers or who do you have as instructors that fill up those 18 weeks? So that's a fabulous point, right? So you can't do it with just one group. College can't do it. Um, it's a combined effort. So the college handles curriculum based in the different local agencies in all over the state, but mainly Navajo County um, and Apache County um, send their instructors along with their their recruits and students. They send instructors on a daily basis. Um, some agencies send quite a few of them depending on what their knowledge is and what they're able to instruct. But uh, we receive instructors every day. Sometimes they're here for a couple hours. Sometimes they're here for a couple days. So you talked that you had been a teacher and a trainer there in the Yavapai County. Mm -hmm. Do you get any training on how to be a teacher? Or, or is any law enforcement officer able to come in and teach a class? So that's, that's, fabul that's a fabulous question. So back in um, 1998, <laughs> I went to a general instructor course. It's put on by Arizona Post, which is the police officer standards and training. And uh, that is the training where they kind of teach you the basics of presenting a lesson and building a lesson plan and learning how to teach and teach the proper curriculum base and, and different methods for teaching in law enforcement. And that is where I became involved. And then I just started to use my knowledge and teach year after year after year um, on a, uh, a regular basis. So how does your law enforcement academy compare to all the others across the state? Are they all the same curriculum, different, or how are they different? Yeah, so they're, they're pretty much very similar. Some of them are, are different on, like say for example, the academy here, it, it's really unique, right? We're kind of rural, but the amount of fa the facilities that we have surrounding us is, is top notch, even including the fire portion here, the total training center package is top notch um, facilities that we have here and, and everything is here, right? Some agencies you may have to drive, um, for example, to another location to drive and to do the track. You may have to drive to another location to use the shooting range. The fabulous part of the Nalita Academy here is it's, we do it all here, right? We're standing we're currently right on the driving track where numerous things occur out here, numerous different training events occur right here. Um, right behind us, we have the shooting range as well. And there's, they don't need to go anywhere. Uh, facilities of the gym right behind us in the blue building. They can work out, they can uh, do their defensive tactics. Um, everything is pretty much right here, which makes it a great resource. So what is the curriculum like besides the driving, the shooting, the defensive tactics? What are they learning in these weeks that they're here at the academy? So <laughs> another great question. So with, with the curriculum, Arizona Post requires, I believe it's 663 hours of training, right? Of combined training. And here at Nalita, we, we put on, it's just over 800. I believe we're at 808 hours, right? So a large portion of that required training is in the classroom training. So it is a specific to specific topics, such as the history is one of the first ones that are taught is the history of law enforcement, right? Goes about the very beginning of law enforcement, how that um, came about. And then there's additional classes like on ethics and professionalism. Um, uh, uh, really some big ones are criminal law. Criminal law is a really great class. Right? It goes on for several days and uh, it talks about the different statutes that they're gonna be looking into, the different elements required of different crimes. And it's really fascinating to learn about that stuff. Um, then there's classes on constitutional law, cultural awareness, which is really important in this area in Navajo County. Um, there's classes on community policing, also very, very important. There's a wide variety of classroom portion of instruction that they receive 
right at the in front of this entrance here in the main classroom of the academy. So, Sheriff, this may be a, a question I should direct more to you, but if somebody is interested in becoming a law enforcement officer and coming to an academy like this, what's the process? Yeah, so most academies you have what we call a sponsored uh, cadet or a sponsored uh, trainee or then you have people that are what we call self-sponsored. Uh, this academy is, is primarily uh, agency sponsored. So we as law enforcement agencies uh, get applications and we do go to career fairs, we go to uh, high schools, we go to uh, uh, you know, publish online and, and look for different applicants. And we receive the applications, go through the background process, the hiring process. They do, uh, before we send them here, they have to meet certain um, physical fitness uh, uh, benchmarks. And so we do all that. It takes us about three months after from the first of the application through the polygraph, physical, uh, medical. And then when we send them to the academy on one of those start dates that follow the, the semester calendar, uh, the director then has them for another 18, 19 weeks. And so it, it's, um, it's about a six to eight month process from hiring or from the first application through the, uh, the entire training. So what are the minimum qualifications to be able to attend the academy to become a law enforcement officer? You know, the minimum qualifications really are pretty simple. Uh, it's, it's, there's two of them that I, I think are the most complicated, but you must be a U.S. citizen. You must be 21 years of age upon graduation. Yep. And I say that we've actually had several that have come to the academy and they just have to have their birthday during that academy setting. We've had that and yeah. we've had to hold some back and wait for that. Uh, 21 years of age. Uh, Arizona driver's license and then that's when it goes into our, our hiring as, as far as their criminal record, their, uh, their drug usage and then it's the two things that I talk about is one they have to bring courage and then the other is they have to have that, uh, they have to bring that those ethics and those standards and those uh, what the public is uh, looking for in a police officer and those are the requirements. So is that something that can be trained, those last two things you talked about, the courage and the ethics? Or is that something that just innately they have to have? I'll, oh, I guess we both can weigh in there. I would say they, they have to have. Um, I think we have this 18 month or 18 week setting, then we have an additional field training. And I think where that's where we have that process of saying, is this, is this applicant or is this cadet have that what it takes? So what do you look for during that time period that you have them to lead you to believe that this will be a good law enforcement officer and somebody that will be a credit to the community that they work with? You know, that, that's a fabulous question. And, and he mentioned some terms and he's right on the money there. But the, the one that comes to me is it's very simple. You got to have the heart, right? You got to have that desire. And you could tell early on if someone has that or not. Um, so do you weed them of, out if they don't? A lot of your training is, is uh, built around looking for that. Yeah. I think right right from the beginning. Yeah. And, and carried through. So. Uh, uh, to answer your question, no, I don't weed them out. They learn to weed themselves out, right? Because going through some of it is pretty exhausting. You know, we expect them to work out and, and to perform at a certain level and to uh, go through the, the standards of what it may take to be a police officer. And with that, some of them decide and, and good on them. They decide, well, maybe this this wasn't for me, right? And, uh, um, and then they, they remove themselves. But um, heart is is a key to this profession. You got to have the heart. Yeah. So that uh, those are your minimum qualifications from there. And of course, then the 18 weeks you have to learn the criminal law, and that's where I think uh, a lot of your staff even yeah. comes. And oh, you, I, I teach. you come yourself. Yeah, I usually teach. juvenile law. Yeah. Oh, actually, the yeah. introduction to uh, the you? criminal justice system. I've turned the juvenile law over to my newest juvenile attorney, but I've. I've taught a number of courses over the years from courtroom demeanor to search and seizure. I mean, it's, it's 18 weeks of, of classroom setting, uh, physical, 
And then there's applying what you learn in the classroom, applying what you learned in the DT room. Like today you're doing scenarios yep. Yep. where they're actually acting out. We bring in actors that uh, do role playing mm -hmm. and they see if they have. And of course our evaluators are looking for those things that, that you taught them in the classroom. So, so you say role playing, what are you talking about? Like today they have a, a domestic violence yep. uh, scene going, which is a lot of the calls. Common. So they're, you're looking, are they applying what they were taught in the classroom? Are they applying the officer safety tactics yep. that you taught them out here? And are they bringing and making sure that if they make an arrest or if they make those decisions, they're within the law, they're within their policies and that everything is coming together in a, in a actual scenario. So. Yeah, yeah, absolutely right. You want to see if what you're teaching them, they're applying that. Yeah. And then there's always more to learn, right? So um, they have, at this stage of the game, they have uh, learned a lot of things on handcuffing, how to approach people, proper stance, officer safety, and we're looking to see if they utilize those techniques, which they're trained. And that's where we're recording this. We're close, relatively close to graduation point. So you're looking at, pr at they're practically applying that classroom teaching them. Yeah, absolutely. It's it's critical. So so is that kind of the evolution? A lot of classroom up front with physical fitness throughout, and then more applications towards the end to see if they get it. Yeah. So it's a combine. It's a combine of everything. So um, of the classroom, then the firearms training is about. 70 hours defensive tactics in this building here that's about 83 hours um, high-risk vehicle stops is about 13 hours driving is about 45 hours and you combine it all together and at the very end there's scenarios that they have to it's a practical exam that they are required there's two different types of exams and they have to to do that and pass um, prior to moving on. So is that an objective or subjective determination that they pass? Well, or, or combination of maybe both? a combination of, of both, but if they're utilizing what they were taught, it's based off of the principles of what they were taught and per the Arizona Post guidelines. And if they meet those qualifications, they, they pass. What agencies have sent cadets through the academy here. Is it just Navajo County or does it go beyond that? No, it, it does go beyond that. So typically Navajo County, um, all different agencies in Navajo County. Um, Sholo has, Navajo County is, uh, is one of the biggest um, senders and supporters. Winslow Police has sent uh, a lot, Holbrook, um, Pine Top. You've had tribal as well. Tribal, Apache. Um, and, and just recently I've been reaching out and I'm getting some outer agencies out of the counties, such as Globe has recently sent uh, some officers and then some count down in, in Gila County, some agencies down there. Um, we are looking, um, and that is the fabulous thing about this academy right now. We also, why we can reach out to those outer areas, because we offer the, the tiny homes, the, the on-site housing that we have here and anyone from out of the area can send people to stay in those those it's a homes. good cost saver for for the training for your training budget when you can send them here locally and those that are kind of in the region they have a place to stay yeah, yeah um, but if you're coming from globe that's a big commute <laughs> yeah you're saving a lot yeah. on hotels and all that um, unfortunately we're all out of okay. time but chad thank you for having us and, no th and explain a little bit about what we have going on here uh, we appreciate the, the academy and not only the in-service training that we do here but the uh, the uh, new uh, cadet training that we have going and our most wanted this month is going to be an applicant that if you have a, any interest in law enforcement and you want to come work for us we're going to send you the link uh, to reach our recruiter which is kaya carroll and uh, please reach out to us and we have an academy starting in january yep end of january so january 2020 four uh, to be the last weeks of January. So thank you again and thank you for tuning in.